Now something that came out during this interview with former President Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta and which was indeed highlighted by the editors is the fact that the former president is very media savvy. That means he really understands how the media works and especially how the media can be used to solve a political problem or to solve a crisis. Now this is a very important point to understand and it is also very instructive that in the article carried in the Daily Nation penned by the editors who are present at the closed door interview with the former president they indeed highlighted this fact. Now what may shock you is that this fact has come into play to completely change the outcome of the events that have been unfolding in our country, very dramatic events in recent days. And let's start at the beginning. The attack on the home of Jomo Kenyatta Jr., the son of former President Uhuru Kenyatta, yeah, by the police believed to be DCI officers who arrived in vehicles with Sudanese number plates is a case in point. Now in the interview, former President Uhuru Kenyatta revealed that he had decided that his personal security team would handle the crisis after his son called him you know, to tell him that there were people at the gate seeking entry into the premises. But then as the people started insisting on gaining entry, he sensed that this was very serious and he decided instead to rush there himself even with his security team in tow, yeah, his security team to deal with the crisis. Now we need to ask the question and answer it, yeah, the simple question, what triggered the president, the former president, to believe that this was a very serious thing unfolding at the home of his son? Well, the president gave us a hint, a very clear one, when he told us at the same interview that he believed he had it from credible sources, that the whole idea of the people invading his son's house was to plant drugs so as to convict in a court of law yeah, the people in that house, yeah, which included the president's son. And on this realization, the former president also seems to have done something else. He called the press. Okay? That is a very important point in our discussion today. Why? Because in retrospect, the media's arrival, by the way, the media arrived before him, the media's arrival at the home of his son changed many things and indeed changed the total outcome of this event, which would have ended up very differently and in a way that would have been very negative, not good, for the Huru Kenyatta family. And we have evidence of this from the fact that as soon as the media arrived, those people trying to gain entry into Jomo Kenyatta Jr.'s house fled. They quickly left. Why? Why did they quickly leave? Why did they leave? If the media did not have an impact, yeah, the arrival of the media, if the arrival of the media did not have an impact on them, what other reason would they have left immediately after the media arrived? I think now you're beginning to get my meaning. And I also believe you're beginning to understand where I'm going with this one. You see, the media are the best witnesses you can have in any situation. Especially in a situation where somebody wants to frame you. It also acts as a very great deterrent to any government that would want to frame somebody and then the media turns up just when the operation is starting. Yeah, it changes everything. Because imagine a situation whereby all this would have gone on without the media being there, without the public knowing what was happening. And then later on in court, Evidence is produced that drugs were actually found at such and such a place. 
of course the reaction of the public would be very different and the whole matter would have ended very differently and this explains why the president looked worried during this interview this was noted by the pressmen there and the ladies and indeed we can get further evidence from the fact from the fact that the former president has made some very drastic moves since that particular incident addressing the press at the scene yeah, when he appeared to be intoxicated after all it was a friday evening yeah you can't hold it against him many kenyans are in that state at that particular time of the week the president went ahead and addressed the media in that state knowing very well that kenya kwanza would never lose the opportunity of pointing it out but he still went ahead that should tell you something that should tell you how serious this thing was and then the follow-up interview yeah which was carried out with the editors and indeed according to my information we should expect more moves from the retired president those are very many things for somebody who's in retirement a president in retirement no less to do within a very short period of time wouldn't you agree you know many people are not aware of the long history of understanding the media that the former president had many people don't even know that people like Dennis Itumbi were brought into the mix introduced to Kenyan politics by Uhuru Kenyatta indeed Itumbi himself has been quoted as saying that the first time former president Uhuru Kenyatta called him that time he was not yet president he disconnected his phone not believing that it was Uhuru Kenyatta indeed he said something like if you're Uhuru Kenyatta then I'm the queen of England and he disconnected his phone <laughs> yes that's what happened now the reason why Uhuru brought Itumbi and company into the picture was because he recognized how important yeah spinning stories in the correct way in the media for a political cause is of course later on things went overboard yeah and we started getting propaganda blatant lies and fabricated stories etc etc which we are still suffering from to this day i guess if you have such powerful tools in the wrong hands then you know what to expect let me just leave it at that and for those who are close observers you will also have noticed that the same thing yeah the media coming in to solve a serious problem happened with the case of Pauline Joroge in Watamu now after the government released a statement a police report actually which indicated the drugs had been found in the vehicle where Pauline Joroge and two other people were in as they were trying to trace Pauline Joroge many Kenyans believed that that was the end of Pauline Joroge being found in possession of drugs especially the quantities which were being quoted is very serious not to include the fact that it completely destroys somebody's public image yeah and remember Pauline Joroge is a politician she's an official of the jubilee party but then take careful note of what happened after that what happened after that is that there was an expose yeah a media report by ntv showing a lot of evidence that actually the drugs must have been planted in fact the report even quoted police officers who wanted to remain anonymous for obvious reasons saying that by the time Pauline Joroge after being arrested arrived at Watamu police station there was no indication that anything had been found in the vehicle which was clear evidence that the drugs were planted planted evidence which only appears after people have been arrested and they are already in police cells this evidence is manufactured yeah to be presented in a court of law to completely nail the target yeah the target victim now all this may look like it is very easy to do 
after the fact. But it takes a lot of skill, knowledge of how the media works, knowledge of the impact of media to pull off something like this. And that's not all. There were a few faces that appeared in court when Pauline Jorogo was presented at the Malindi court. The video is available online. Faces of individuals who are linked to the former president. Let me just leave it at that. But the important take home here is that President William Samuel Ruto is dealing with a formidable opponent. If he wants to chokoza the former president, then what is up against may not be what some people are thinking. Yeah, now quickly before I go, just a reminder, the latest weekly intelligence briefings should be out in a few hours, number 112, and it's Moto Kuliko Pasiamaka. The other offer ended, you can see the latest offer on your screens right now, and for that, only $8.95, $8.95, you'll be able to get both a yearly subscription to my weekly intelligence briefings and also completely free my sets of videos on how to prosper in a difficult economy. Until the next video, this is Chris Kumekucha.